Well, this podcast is always kid friendly. I don't know what keep it kid friendly. What, what do you mean? We got to keep it kid friendly. Child yeah. friendly. Child friendly. Well, hey, hey, welcome, welcome to a Rivercast because I'm slowly gi- giving all the responsibility of the spending cast to River Childs, my co-host here. Get a load of this guy. <laughs> a big load. Okay. Well, I guess not. But uh, either way. We're here today. I'm very excited about our guest today. We're here today with the three-time Grammy-nominated producer and engineer. He's worked with many notable Bay Area artists and uh, other artists, New York artists, all types of artists. Uh, Mr. Max Perry, welcome. Thanks welcome for to the me, program. Yeah. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. So it's a little rainy out there. Um, I know. I'm sick of it. Yeah, it's uh, man. I, I got soaked. I was telling you, I got soaked riding my bike all day today. It, <laughs> yeah. it was one of those days where like the the rain cloud was following me around. It's a struggle. Know? Yeah, it is a struggle. It is a struggle. So, uh, it, but you're used to it in Brooklyn, New York. You're you're, you're yeah, yeah. At least there's not seasonal depression out here. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like it gets crazy in the winter in New York. Like you know, the it gets so cold your face freezes. Like you can't smile effectively. Yeah. I guess, yeah, it's 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 crazy. Like so uh even though it's been really cold out, I'm still like kinda of spoiled. And um it's definitely like comparatively so much better. Right on, right yeah. on. And how long have you been out here? Since two thousand eight. Wow, okay, yeah. okay. So it's about what, thirteen <laughs> years now, wow. Yeah. Why'd you move from Brooklyn to the Bay? Uh because uh New York was in a weird uh, place musically we were in like a, a little bit of an identity crisis due to the rising of the south mm-hmm. and then uh combined with like a lot of the major studios in new york were closing down because they were more profitable as condos and so it made it so the place where people actually create the music um were kind of going to places like, you know, L.A. And, like, you know, a lot of people went to Miami because there's a bunch of good studios in Miami. Um, So New York was kind of, like, stale at a certain point, like, around, like, when I left. And then uh, the Bay Area always had a thriving independent scene. And so for a, uh, a, like, an up-and-coming musician... um, I would, you know, I would be coming out here and, and selling beats to people, working with different artists. So, like, you know, I was out here already making money. So I figured I'm like, yo, I can go out there and kind of segue and, like, do my music full time. And um, I also had family out here and friends out here. So that was obviously a big part of it also. But, I mean, yeah, definitely the thriving independent scene and, uh, and just becoming a professional musician full-time. So did the staleness ever hit the bay, as far as you're concerned? Did it skip uh, over? Did you miss it? Is it happening now? What's going on with the staleness? Uh, uh, I wouldn't say staleness, but the bay's got to drop all the foo-foo shit. Okay, expand. The foo-foo, uh, yeah, what's the foo-foo shit? Uh, just fucking low-level music, low-level graphics, low-level videos, low-level promotion low level for you know what i mean like no, there's a lot of there's a lot of bullshit out here unfortunately and not all of it is i mean there's there's bullshit everywhere but um i just see a high percentage of the artist community settling set just settling too quick i guess instead of like taking you don't have to like do music like any other person or area or anything. But it's good to be aware of the national the national uh standard. Yeah, like the national standard, if you will. And and to know what all that's about and make music that's um surpassing that standard. Or at least competing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is because. it because of who the consumers are? Is, is it because of who the Bay has become that it's just people who don't know any better consuming this music? I mean, yeah, it's part. It's partly to the the consumer, but I mean, honestly, the consumer in in most areas is is completely uh, is completely just clueless in a lot of ways. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like they're very they fall victim every time to like big radio cramming a record down their throat, so they'll pretty much like whatever gets played a thousand times whether they like it or not it's well, gonna get ingrained in their brain yeah i like because you know i listen to kmel i'm always driving around and i just hear 
It's pretty much like you know about five or six songs. They they will play some old school stuff. Yeah, they got some rotation. Di- some different stuff, but it's yeah. You keep hearing it. You keep hearing it, and then it's like man, you know. I hated that song the first thirty times I listened to it, but now that I'm on now like, like forty seven, it. now it's now it's in there. They, and then they, once you like get to sixty seven, eighty seven, yeah. now you really like it. Oh yeah, once you get to four twenty, whoo, look out! Yeah, yeah. you're oh you're out of there. Yeah, yeah. No, then, you guys don't remember. We used to be able to call a phone number and request a song on the radio. Do you all know that? Know about that? Yeah. Do they still yeah. do that? I think they do. They I don't do know that. if they still do uh, that. Well, they can do you the, get through to Cameo where they answer the phone. Yeah, they do well, anymore. Well, they do those call-ins where well, it's not mm. requesting songs. It's like, hey, I gotta, I want to do a, I have a crush on this person. But that's like morning show, like prank yeah, type that's routine. like a shout and they, out. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, and they yeah, probably yeah. took a hundred calls and distilled it into five. No, this was real. Where if you waited long enough, you were gonna get your, your song, song yeah, on yeah. the radio. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Viewers' yeah, choice. Yeah, I want to do that and request my own song. Yeah, exactly. Of course. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe too many people were doing that, and that's why they stopped probably, doing it. Like, probably. Probably. So I could, because in the Bay, like, I feel like that, like, I know they d- would do that with, like, like, back when I was in high school, like, it was, like, hyphy movement, and people would always be requesting, like, the local, like, hey, let's request so-and-so yeah. and so-and-so that was, like, from career. down the street. That, that, yeah, yeah. So it's definitely, yeah, there, there could have been that crowdsourcing, and maybe they, they got hit to it. Maybe they, maybe they just, uh, maybe they didn't. I don't know. Uh, Reminds me of a story about a cop calling KML and requesting a song. What? Well, you have to get the reference because I just told you the story. You did just tell me a story, but I thought you were about to... Explain. The Mac I, Dre. I, the Mac Dre... Uh, how the cop called and, and dedicated a... Um, I fought the law, but the law won, dedicated to get dedicated it to Mac Dre. Really? After he got out. I well, I learned that. that from watching a documentary today. A documentary was it? A, was it a Max Ray documentary? That, that yeah. someone in this room it's apparently did some of the soundtrack. I was, was going to say, yeah, especially right. the score. Uh, well, I didn't do the score. I actually, I just did some. Especially uh, whatever you did. Yeah, <laughs> was amazing. No, I, uh, I, uh, what I did was uh, like audio restoration mm-hmm. for very, for, very crucial component. Yeah, it was like a lot of interview stuff that like had like background noise and oh, all okay. types of stuff and kind of had to make everything it know. worked it that's was cool. good that's cool it held my attention like that's for the dope. whole hour that's dope. And yeah. i had a busy day <laughs> yeah i need to rewatch. i remember i have seen that documentary like a few years ago davy d's that. in it chewy yeah. gomez is in it yeah a bunch of people in yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was cool to see davy because i was once interviewed by davy d but oh, that's cool. a whole other story it was like uh, yeah teacher stuff <laughs> Nice. Like, nice. Nothing to do with music. What's no, up, baby? That, that's, that's I know cool, you're though. watching. What's my camera? That's oh, that's, the only that's camera. your camera right there. Up? Yeah, yeah. What's up, Double D? Yeah. So yeah. So how did you get that gig? The doing the, the... Oh, name drop. Um, <laughs> I think working with, you know, uh, I I worked for Wash House and Wash House was was very instrumental in a lot of those Mac Dre albums along with Fizz. So it was like kind of like a collaboration. Um. And so, you know, we, we still have, like, a lot of relationships with, with Diz and Dre's camp and all that. And uh, it was just kind of like I was the guy in the room when something needed to be done. And, you know, I'm a very enterprising person, so, like, you know, I'm never going to uh, never gonna not jump at an opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, with that HTML hack you did. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, the yeah. one to call. Should we yeah. be bo- we got a problem. Should we be putting that on the air? The hacking? I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. We're not going to so. talk about any HTML hacks or any yeah. any stuff. Even you though, want yeah. more, call in 1-800 number. And yeah. we're going to squash that argument we had before about the whole beat thing. What did yeah, you think yeah. of the beat? That, that, uh, uh, that my, that my, I my mean, it sounded made. pretty good, but I was definitely a little disappointed that, uh, that I got bumped. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I, you know, here's the thing. It wasn't anything personal. I wanted to put your, you know, Faded is like one of my favorite songs. Yeah. I, like I didn't even, I, I wasn't into that song before I even met you. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. even knew your producer. But, you know, if you put a, a copyright song in your stream, they mute you. And they, oh, and, yeah, 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 so, yeah. And then yeah, so we'd yeah, be talking yeah. right now and people would just be Oh, seeing, yeah, 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 yeah. Or like no, no stream. No, that's a no go. Yeah. They don't yeah, ban you, no though. Go. They don't they ban, ban you. you. They give you a little slap on the wrist and they mute your, your stuff. So Ironic. That's, yeah. That's whack. Yeah, well, you know what's ironic too. Yeah, like because you're in here, but it's the robots that, that yeah, run things yeah, now. Yeah, 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 one yeah. thing that was that was super ironic was I was doing one of these streams and we were watching clips from the, the opening scene of a movie, mm. and the movie, the opening scene of the movie was on YouTube, so we were watching a YouTube clip of this movie on the stream, and then YouTube muted the end of the stream 
because we had this copyrighted content Damn. that was freely available on their platform. Damn. <laughs> and That's now we're probably cold. gonna get muted because we're trash talking. I'm not. I'm not trash talking you too. Hey, robots, I love you. Robot overlords, thank you for for uh, giving us the scraps that you give us. We love it. Uh, it's 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 beautiful. It's the new era. And so I just want to say that. We but are not robots, though. We're, no. we're not robots. No, we're not. No. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. yeah. We're part robot. Yeah. We got we got robots in our pocket all, all the time. So. Yeah, then they hit us with the RFID ships, and that's the start. Oh, yeah. Look at Oh, we're getting into conspiracies? Let's do oh, it. Yeah. Let's do it. Why are you getting so excited? Let's do it. I'm getting my second vax tomorrow. I'm getting chipped up tomorrow. That's really? right. That's yeah. why I feel Food so service. safe. Yeah. Food service, oh, wow. yeah. No Rona here. Yeah. Rona free. Rona free bubble. Yeah. But I'm gonna. Be, At least I'm, they say. Yeah, I'm gonna start. That's what like, I'm saying. I'm gonna start speaking in, in algorithms though. Uh, What's yeah. new? I mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there we go. Well. Uh, hey. So so what's this with conspiracy theories? Are, are you? Uh, uh, I don't know. It depends where you want to start. Yeah, I mean, what? How do you define what to what's, call a conspiracy theory anyway? You well, what's know? okay? Maybe it's just real life. I li- here, here's the thing with conspiracy theories. I like stuff that that you've actually experienced. I don't like talking about things that you just read on the internet. Now, you, you mean like alien? Alien visits? type stuff. Alien visits. Uh, that's not a conspiracy the, theory, though. That's a personal experience. Exactly, but it ties into conspiracy theories, and people sometimes lump it into the same thing. Yeah. Anyways, you know, being in the music industry, let's let's loop it back around to that music <laughs> industry. Uh, what what's like one of the, what's one of the craziest conspiracy theories that you've like been a part of or you witnessed or that you believe in based on experience? I mean, experience? There's, there's not. I, I wouldn't say there's real uh, like I, like I don't know about like any conspiracy theories involving like music, but I mean, there's definitely like high level business structures that people are unaware of and it causes them to not get money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's talk about that. Illuminati. Not the Illuminati, just oh. like you know, just like, just like not everyone knows how to fill out a application or. Aha, uh-huh. and or, then it's not accidental. It's not that's accidental. The, they that's sit, the, spirit, yeah, the conspiracy yeah, they, theory part. They, 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 well, no, that's not a conspiracy. That's no, just that's the real reality. Business like, practices. Yeah, yeah, like you know, they're gonna like the whoever you know the structures of life are gonna be set up in a way where the lazy don't pass. <laughs> pass through the threshold Mm -hmm. and the people that don't know how to navigate whatever bureaucracy you're dealing with don't pass through the threshold and the people that just don't have the dedication to finish a job period whether it's uh getting money or cleaning your house or doing your homework properly or whatever the case may be they're not going to pass through the threshold this game is set up to separate winners and losers Guys, and i don't want to judge anyone calling them a loser because it's you know to each his own whatever but you know there's there's you know if you're trying to do something doing it is the win and failing at it is the loss yeah yeah so you know we gotta win what yeah. about the idea that you gotta fail i never quite got that though it's like where, where you, you must want... fail many many times well it's like you don't then win. you'll succeed it's like what if i don't want to fail <laughs> Well, it's like you don't win. It's not like you don't win. It, it's you don't lose. Like you, you either win or you learn. You come back because losing yeah. is like when you and give you don't up quit. and you said, "Yeah, quit, you quit." Quitting, quitting is the loss. Yeah, there you go. Got See, it. I like that motivation. There we go. See, that's that's a good conspiracy theory right there. Just like good positive energy. I like that. But mm-hmm. but I want to loop back because you brought that up, and I know it's a separate business you have, or is it what? the IP uh, thing yeah, that yeah, you yeah. do? Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit about that. Is because is it to, like help artists, help producers? So yeah. you're saying a lot of producers were losing money. I've seen some of your posts and yeah. And so rants. I started a publishing administration company to help songwriters which are artists and producers uh to help them collect royalties off their songs and in- administer them in the correct way nice yeah so what was like what was the need like yeah what because uh, i've seen you get very passionate in some mm-hmm. of your your uh, videos yeah. about yeah. like you know you, you guys ripping a, ripping off the producer like this and that like what? What were some of these these problems you were seeing that that led you to? Because it was um, it was based out of it seems like it was based out of some of these issues that led you to kind of create this. I, I, this. I've de- I've dealt with certain issues like that firsthand. Not many because I'm I'm fairly uh, fairly proactive about my business. Um, but I just I'm you know I'm definitely like a a, pro- a professional observer, and like you know I see I just see just younger cats than me just cats that are more early on in the game just 
just whore themselves out, just giving everything away for free, just to fit in with the rapper. You're giving all your power away to some other human being instead of fucking self-actualizing your own abilities. And uh, just, you know, people not really taking a stand for, for their stuff. And, and uh, you know, and I, I can't fully blame the rapper because they, they don't know either. They, they don't even know what's... A lot, of, a lot of artists don't even know what's going on. Yeah. Literally. They're completely clueless about that. Like, people have to realize this music business thing has gone on for 50, 60, 70 plus years. So this thing all happened before we ever existed. So that being said, there is a structure in place. There is a system in place. And if you don't, if you're not aware of the system and the structure and don't at least adhere to it in a in some sort of way, you're lost. You're done. You don't even exist in the business. Mm -hmm. And um, and you're definitely not going to make any money. And I mean, like, I mean, you know, the dream can only become a reality by making money, unfortunately. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I can't pay bills with clout. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, you know, my son sitting next to me, he needs cool stuff. And that's the, the, you know, we, you know, we gotta, we gotta figure it out so that, you know, we gotta, we gotta be earners and, um, and like the publishing is, is a main way that musicians earn. And so, but it's also one of the main things that people are clueless about in the music business. So it's one of those, like, it's one of just those crazy parts where it's like one of the most vital things and one of the most unknown things at the same time. Okay. Cool. So what's like the strangest or like, was there anything that, that you saw like, uh, without naming names, like a specific instance that just left you so aghast uh, in, working in the music business with either, because uh, I know there's a lot of egos at play, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the showbiz, sometimes the showbiz and reality kind of overlap in these strange ways, yeah. so. You asking for a story? I'm asking for a story. Like the story of all stories? I mean, I I'm like, I'm asking, well, not even like a story, but just like. Because I know there's got to be something that, like, you're saying, like, yeah, these people, like, they don't know this, they don't know that, and they, they, we got to navigate the system. Like, I, I know there's got to be something that... There's really... Honestly, there's really not. There's really not any, like, stories per se. It's kind of just, like, little operational things on a day-to-day -day basis that people just, like, really don't know what they're, what's supposed to be done. So they're all just kind of winging it. And a lot, you know... Um, I, I don't want to ever knock this business, but you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the music business is rooted in the drug game. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of people think the same rules apply and they don't, mm -hmm. they don't, you're not like, you, you know, if I sell you a beat, that's not like selling you some weed or something like that. Yeah. It's not just like selling a carton of milk. Yeah. It's there's, not a one time. There's, yeah. yeah. There's a, like whether, whatever you think about it. There's attachments that go along with that. Like, if I have a beat, that's that beat is forever mine. Mm -hmm. I'm always attached to that. Yeah. And, like, some people think it's just, like, one and done, and, like, that's it. And, like, you know, if you don't know better, then, um, you know, you might fall victim to stuff like that. But, um, you know... You gotta really learn the business that you're in. If you're a hot dog salesman, you gotta know where the best corner it, to sell hot dogs is. You gotta know where to get the cheapest but yet quality hot dogs, the cheapest yet quality buns. Like, you need to like get all your little add-ons. Like, you need to know the business in and out. And if you don't, you're goofy. Period. Yeah. Like, there's no and personally, there's no room in my life for that. Yeah, for sure. And well, that, I do like the hot dog metaphor. Now, on that, uh, I was actually wondering. If you'd be down to produce like a full album's worth of beats for this podcast, mm -hmm. uh, it would be great exposure for you. <laughs> yeah, uh, so that, it's not gonna that's be how a, that's how it goes. Yeah, that's it's how gonna, it goes. It's, yeah. It, it, it'll be great exposure. <laughs> we don't have a lot of money right now. We got we got some Modellos and we got <laughs> some uh, Modellos. you know we got hot dogs. Like I'm I can, halfway I, into the Modellos, so there's the deposit. Exactly, you're <laughs> yeah. already kind of invested in this <laughs> yeah. little bit, you know. So I, I, you kind of owe me like a, a quarter of a beat <laughs> yeah, already. A quarter um, of a beat. Yeah, well, you know, just like some drums, a little bass maybe and we'll work on it. yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah, yeah good luck with that yeah so what what 
what's one of the artists, like, who are some of the Bay Area artists that you've had the most fun working with? I know, I know you've done a lot of work with Burner. Yeah, I did um, a lot of work with Burn for a long time. Um, Mr. Fab, um, Vital, uh, who else? Jacka, um, there are some, I'm trying to think, I mean, I, I, I get, I get, it's so funny, I draw a blank, like, I was telling yeah. someone this the other day, whenever someone asks me who I've worked with, I have to look at my Instagram, because I just, like, almost forget. <laughs> That's um, awesome. That daddy yeah. brain. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, I, I try to live in the, it, live in the present, and don't get too caught up on, like, whatever I did in the past, like, so even, like. What's up with the present? Like, what's happening right now in the Bay Area music scene? Um, the Bay Area is in a pretty good place right now. There's, I mean, there's like I, you know, like I said, there's a lot of like, I think subpar music amongst us, but there's definitely like a lot of dope stuff. Like, what's you know, good? What's good? I mean, like Kaylani's from the Bay Area. Yes. She makes dope oh, yeah. stuff. Yes. Like, Jeezy's pretty dope. Um, I dropping. love what yeah. what my boy Kevin Allen and and uh, Grand National are doing. Um, they're super dope. Uh, my, my boy Rico Pabon just dropped a new album. I don't know if you know him. He's know, from but, New York. But shout out Rico, though. Yeah, there you go. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your minute <laughs> yeah, of your time. Yeah. Yeah, back to you. <laughs> yeah. Back to the guests. Um, <laughs> and uh, my homegirl, uh, Jane Hancock, is a super dope R&B artist. Like, really incredible talent. Um, there's, you know, a, a nice handful of dope producers out, out here. Um, her, just one like song of the year record of the year i can't remember which one she's from vallejo wow. yeah yeah she, yeah her has been doing like really incredible stuff um I'm trying to think what else and like you know i'm really trying to I, I really like to see more business more music business entities in in the bay area you know there's we have plenty of artists and producers and stuff like that but like there's not enough structure out here and that comes with business entities, unfortunately. Mm. Um, and like Empire is a great is a great start to to moving in that direction. And you know, hopefully, uh, IP Collections is is going to follow suit in that same sort of uh, essence and and just kind of standard of things and uh, help bring some some larger structure to the Bay Area that could maybe make it so one day you know a label wants to put an office out here you know what i mean where yeah. where, where it's worth it you know what i mean yeah um but you know we got to come to the table right we gotta like you know me not being from here me being from new york growing up in new york and you know a lot of californians don't want to hear this but a lot you know uh, growing up in new york you really get a better sense of what the mountaintop is oh come on I'm telling you. Come on, you New Yorkers. Always talking about the yeah. mountaintop. Well, yeah. when, you, when you live at the mountaintop and you're looking down on every on the valleys, it's it's um it's a perspective gainer. Because I'm I grew up around everything. And like I know the Bay Area is like extremely diverse, just like the Bay, uh, the uh, New York is, but there are certain aspects of of li of of just general life that exists in New York that just straight up doesn't exist in here, like the stock market, for instance, or like... Did you, um, did you get into GameStop? I did not. <laughs> I did not. I wish I did, just because, hey, what the hell? Um, <laughs> I, I'm surprised that it went up again after it went down, but I, I mean, obviously yeah. that was like false inflation, so like, yeah. um, I, like, you know, I knew what the deal was with the Redditors and all that yeah. stuff, and... And I mean, I'm I'm all for it because I mean, you know, the big powers have have been doing market manipulation since the beginning of time, oh, yeah. since the beginning of the stock yeah. market. So it's like, we uh, little the little guys need to uh, need to get in on that too. I yeah. think uh, Robin Hood, you're whack. If you're people at Robin Hood, you guys are whack. Yeah, for, uh, up, Robin for Hood. putting a freeze on GameStop. Let the yeah. little people get their money. The big dudes will be fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're called Robin Hood. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Serious. Most yeah. ironic, um, ironic name of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of the little guys, yeah. what do you tell the uh, Bay Area youth, you know, who want to get involved in the music business? What's Learn up with the, the high business. schoolers? Learn the starting where? Business. What's the starting point? Let's say they don't have a studio at their high school. Their uncle, cousin, you know, nobody. They, they where? We, they I had nothing. Like I had, I had like no music. Pro like I feel like kids got it so good these days with like, like even like him. Like he has like you know a lot of his like little like 
his like math thing is like a game damn near on the iPad. Mm-hmm. And the reading thing is like we had no like games. Like we had yeah. like work. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's like like, you know, I was kind of growing up in an era where, like, a lot of school budgets were getting cut. There wasn't really, like, that music program. Like, there was, like, mm-hmm. there was, like, band. And at the time, I was probably too ignorant to realize how cool that is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, like, uh, uh, like, chorus, which I kind of wasn't really into. Like, I wasn't really into the singing thing. Like, I did sung a little bit, like, stuff like that in elementary school. But I kind of, like, grew out of that. So, like... Just these like studio programs, like all that stuff is so dope because that literally didn't exist when I was uh, in school. Um, but, you know, like the, still the first thing that I would tell them is like learn the business because the music part is the easy part. You know what I mean? Like that's the part that most people excel at naturally, like just with without just with their natural abilities. You know what I mean? So it's not it's not the thing that they really have to give so much effort to opposed to like learning the business which you're completely clueless on and it really takes work Mm -hmm. and that's gonna like the the reason i've been able to survive for 20 years is because of the business side not because of the music side even though the music side uh even though the music side uh supports the business side because obviously if my music is whack then i wouldn't be doing anything but like knowing how to like it's the same thing knowing how to maneuver in the in the bureaucracy is um is important yeah and so what like yeah how was that journey for you like how did you kind of you just kind of flying by the seat of your pants like learning school of hard I mean, knocks or were there, I mean, a were little there bit, yeah places, i mean where were what how did you learn how did you i mean my family my family is in the music business so like that like i definitely had some like pretty cool um people in my corner as resources like my dad was a big influence in my in my business knowledge um but you know like i i've had lawyer i've had a music i've had an entertainment lawyer since i was 17 and um just kind of like knowing like i knew the process before i was uh engaging in the process so by the time i was engaging in the process i wasn't new to it mm-hmm. opposed to like someone who like thinks certain things should be the way they are but it's because they're le- they're poorly referenced and they you know what i mean it's like oh like oh you gave me a thousand dollars for a beat okay it's mine no it's not <laughs> like and the reason that you think that is because you have a seed that was built in your head that was that was started that germinated off a poorly referenced idea that who the hell knows told you your friend told you you know what i mean like, God forbid, like, you know, some people pick up a book and, like, once again, adhere to the structure that was here before us. And, um, yeah, like, learning the business is the most crucial thing. Like, the most crucial thing. Is there a book or a resource or something? Yeah, The Business of Music by Donald Passman, I think, right. like that. Ooh. And uh, Write that down. Yeah, there's, a, there's definitely a couple one. Like, if you, if you, uh, if you Google, like, music business books i'm sure it'll be like one of the top yeah ones it's a good I've place heard. to start yeah, right for sure um yeah i'm hey, pretty sure Don- to make it yeah, the business of music by donald passman i'm pretty sure it's like a really, a really good one and it's i think they're on like the 10th edition or something like that i actually have nice. uh i forgot what, what i have like an original printing of one of the of like the first music business book there was. I don't think it, I think it was before the Donald Passman book. I forgot who wrote it. All right. But yeah, it was something that my my dad passed down to me. Nice. nice. Yeah. So he was like that was his career lifelong was he was in the music biz as well. Um. What was his? He 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 always had one foot in one foot out. Mm-hmm. Um. But um. But definitely yeah. My dad's a songwriter, a drummer, plays guitar. Uh, ran an independent label for years put out his band stuff put out other people's stuff so he showed me like a lot of like set up you know worldwide tours by himself um was doing things like um which is like kind of standard now getting paid for a live performance from ASCAP or BMI he was writing them like handwritten letters like yo I performed that thing and they would send him checks Wow. So stuff that's like so easily automatable on like the websites now, mm-hmm. he was doing manually and he was doing this like in 2000. Wow. So like he he was doing a lot of stuff that was like that was kind of like almost kind of in the essence of what I'm doing now with the collection but just for just for like his band and himself. But it was still like 
it, it still like I guess it, yeah, it definitely had some sort of effect on me. Uh, effect on me, I guess you know. Yeah. What yeah. kind of music did your father deal in? He mainly like does like rock, country, Americana, um, probably some blues and stuff like that. But yeah, like mostly like kind of like rock. Speaking of different kinds of music, so yeah. you were in Hawaii for a while. You worked yeah. with some reggae artists. Yeah, yeah. yeah how was that? What was that like? Oh, uh, it was great. I love Hawaii. Hawaii is like definitely one of my, one of my, uh, one of my homes. And um, and yeah, worked. Uh, I still work very closely with Wash House Records, um, who's got a, a very big, uh, a very big foundation out in the islands. Mm-hmm. And uh, worked with artists like uh, J Boog, Fiji, who's like, Fiji's like pff, the godfather of, of Polynesian music. Mm-hmm. And um, who else? Uh, Jock here. I mean, uh, not Jock here. Uh, Jock here. I actually have a song with Jock here for. Junior Reed. Yeah, Junior Reed. That's exactly who I was thinking of, <laughs> Junior Reed. Um, Yami Bolo, uh, Peter Morgan, Gramps Morgan from Morgan Heritage. Um, Elaine, um, Gappy Ranks. Um, Why was it Hawaii that that was sort of the the center for that work? Well, my business partner who owns the label, he's he's Hawaiian, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, you know uh, a lot of the you know Boog is Samoan, and uh, he always his dream was always to have a studio in Hawaii, mm-hmm. so they built um, they built this you know beautiful studio multi-million dollar studio uh pretty much in uh my friend's backyard big island Where? uh uh oahu oahu yeah nice. on uh yeah that's awesome north shore yeah so chill yeah it was incredible so do you get out there once in a while uh i haven't been out i haven't really done any like traveling since since covid and the quarantine um i was actually planning a trip right before it hit like luckily I didn't have anything booked, but I'm like, yeah, I need I need a vacation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I still need that. Vacation. Already needed a vacation, yeah. right? Yeah. Little Oof. did we know. Oh my god. Yeah, same deal, dude. Oh, I would love to go to Hawaii. You ever been? Yeah, a couple times. Where'd you go? Now I've been to Maui and Oahu. Nice. Yeah. I haven't been to Maui. Yeah, I went to Big Island for uh, my brother's wedding and uh, Oahu. We were nice. we were on Oahu for like on and off for a couple of years. Nice, yeah. yeah. Oahu's cool. Was, yeah, Oahu's cool. My, was, my mom was actually running the. It was when I was in high school. She was running the Honolulu Marathon. Oh wow! And went to we and I got to go out there and no, so it's a tough life, mom. Yeah, yeah, so I was out there, you know, giving water and whatnot, helping out with the thing, and they got me a ticket out there. Oh, the water's wow, so warm. Wow, you got a ticket to be I got, a helper. I got a ticket to, to nice, go. mom. Yeah, it was mom very nice. Yeah, the, water, that. the water's so great out there. Oh, oh it's amazing. God. I was like, I can't I, stand California beaches because of going to hawaii beaches yeah it's like well that's the thing you know it's growing up here it's like oh we would you know we play wave tag where the waves chase you yeah like yeah, uh, yeah. but then i go out there <laughs> and she's like come swim in the ocean i'm like no 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 it's nice like but oh, i'll get like, wet whoa see like in new york <laughs> the beaches are gross but at least it's warm they're warm in yes. new york and yeah the, yeah and the, the water summer. is warmer uh, yeah yeah like i'm, I'm out here like i'm in new york i'm all in the ocean like as a kid like the, i used to go to the beach like every day in new wow. york yeah, and like the Atlantic versus the Pacific. Yeah, and it it was it was cool. Like you know, it was hot, and but like I don't know, it's just like Cali right beaches are let down. Oh, <laughs> maybe not SoCal, but like at least NorCal, the beaches are like cold and like. Yeah. yeah you gotta bring a parka. Yeah, a parka in the water. In basket. the water, the parka comes in the water. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty chilly out here. I grew up going to Alameda Beach, so mm. that's a whole different experience. Really? A mile out, and like, the water's just up to my knees, Daddy. I didn't live oh, in Alameda, wow. but that was I, the closest I've, beach to us in Oakland. Really, huh? You know, besides I've Lake ne- Merritt, you can't bathe no, in there. I've never, I've never, uh, I've never even been to that beach in Alameda. Oh, it's lovely. Uh, really? Yeah, huh? it's just the water's hella shallow, like uh, you go f- far. That might be good for him. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Huh. Do it. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, polar no, bears. it's going to rain tomorrow. Polar bears. It's going to rain tomorrow. So when the weather clears up, check Do you guys know about that. the polar bears? What? Yes. You know about them? What? They so, swim. North Oakland? To... So there's these, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, no, them, no, no, no. I don't no. know uh, of them <laughs> to be out here, but there's these guys in New York and they're like 70 years old. They do it out here too. Oh, they do it out yeah. here. Oh. And they swim in the winter. In the bay. 
Whoa. In, in at the like at the beach, like goes, like yeah, it's crazy. Like, okay, I thought you were. I thought like you were making like a that. North Oakland reference because it's the North Pole. Polar bears. Mr. Fab. Be, you know, he knows. Did, did, did he? Did he make that? Well, he's. Cause I think he's North Oakland. Too. Yeah, it's nice. a, they, they say it's the North Pole. North Oakland's North Pole. So uh, polar bears. Connecting the dot. Yeah. He says that in New Oakland, huh? I think yeah, got the North. Got the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know if he's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he definitely. I know he. It's it's it's, it's a thing. But, yeah. I remember polar bears being in that verse somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Now yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you learn something That's new every day. That's a good Yeah. <laughs> the new polar bears. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been over to his uh, his store, his dope bear uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. store? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I went. I went. Uh, I went. I've been, I've been a couple times, but I went. Um, like specifically, like when he first opened to the, you know, like. Where's that? Yeah. Some, Tell us more. It's, like uh, it's on, on uh on Broadway and I forgot what the cross street is like. Broadway seventeenth or something. Yeah. Like that. What's it called? Or, Dope era. Dope era. Yeah. Yeah. And he it used to he used to have this little one on I think it was on Market Street. Was, He's actually got a, a nail shop there now. Oh really? Yeah. Like I think it might be I think it might be next door, but oh. like literally on that same block he just opened up a nail shop. Wow. Yeah. Oh, right on. Yeah, it's continuing enterprising. to enterprising. Yeah, make yeah. money, make money. It's funny because like he like he'll get like his nails done and like get like so <laughs> like I remember, I remember uh, being near the studio and like walking. I think I was walking into Touch a Soul or something, and like, like I'm walking past the nail shop and he's like Max. <laughs> and he's like, he's in there getting his nails done. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, you gotta keep the nails. Pick a color. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dudes I think get, he, dudes I think, get, get I, think he, I think he was doing just get a little, like you know a little clear color. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> No. Yeah. No. I know. I know. We don't want but to people, start any rumors. Of yeah. That. But people do that too. No, they do. That's people that's, do that's that a good thing. That's, yeah. That's part of the them day there. Yeah, you know, stuff. You paint whatever you want. But hey. no, nah, dude's always been getting manicures. They just file it up, grease it up. I need a pedicure make it look... right now. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah. I need a pedicure. Yeah. And I don't think you're the only one in this room, and I'm not. One. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, need just like based I... on things that. Yeah, I need them to take like I, I need like a belt sander. <laughs> yeah. Taken to my foot, just. Yeah. yeah. That's what I need. Chainsaw. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. 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 We need to stop talking about that. No, <laughs> no I think we should continue this. I, this is exactly where I wanted the conversation I want to, to go. This. The toe, I, 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 I can't. Out. I can't. Yeah, I want everything to open up so stop. I can go get a pedicure. Over. So yeah, speaking absolutely. of this knucklehead, though, where'd uh-huh. you meet him? I want to know. At the shop. At the shop. Yeah. The yeah. Carpet shop. Yeah. The carpet. <laughs> Kinahan's carpets uh, over in Spring. So uh, y'all got got to chatting. You're a regular customer at the shop. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Double toasted bagels with butter. Lovely. Light butter. And you're, nice. Light butter. Light and butter. Can we wow. talk about this 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 whole bagel debacle? I kind of had yes. issues. Yeah. Okay. Tell me. Talk okay. To me. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm just gonna start off saying I'm gonna start with the compliment. Okay. Best bagels <laughs> in the bay, mm-hmm. hands down. Uh, yeah. I'm a bagel aficionado. Nice. New York. Okay. Hey. Okay. So boogie two things. Boogie woogie bagel even better than boogie woogie bagel. Brothers bagels? Oh, you don't. I, th- I thought the bagels come from. That's boogie what they. Yeah, what? Oh, they are the yeah, best. but they're fresher over there. Boogie woogie. Sorry. Okay. Uh, wow. <clears throat> Mike, back to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the well, so I wanna, yeah, you don't cut them off before like I hear the critique. Here. Okay, so a can of hand carpet critique. Bagels mm-hmm. do not should not be white. Mm-hmm. That shit needs to be golden and crunchy. Yeah. Which only damn near the double toe. Really. We need like the to the one point five toast. Okay. To because sometimes it gets burnt, which I'm not mad at burnt. I yeah. like the burnt. Oh, okay. I do. I kind of like the burnt. Some people complain about the burnt though. Yeah. Well, when it's like, when it's like, ash. Mm-hmm. When it's like black char. When it looks like charcoal. Yeah. But it's like like dark dark toast. I, I mess with. And also, the bagel doesn't retain heat unless it's toasted properly. So you'll get it, and it's like done. But it'll be like kind of cold, and then two. You hearing this, Jimmy Kin- Mr. Kinahan? The own, that's the the owner is his name on it. And then name. two. Write this down. The light butter thing because mm-hmm. like I'll get the bagel and it'll be like completely wet, even on yeah. the outside. Yeah. <laughs> and like. With butter. It's oh yeah, and it's 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 a it's a mess. Yeah. It's like so, I literally have to like. <laughs> like uh, blotter the the butter off yeah the no, it, 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 well we do that's the thing you know uh, everyone uh, we're, we're constantly getting different people, new people are training and stuff although we have a pretty consistent crew now <laughs> yeah but uh yeah it's a uh 
you know, sometimes we, if we put it, we have a standard amount. And some so people, you know me. Put, so you, you put less. Yeah, let, I know. We have yeah. like so, the rapport. You know but what if, I mean? But uh, yeah, if, if someone just gets the, if you don't ask for the light butter, then they'll put on the standard amount, which might be, or they might even over. You know, I, I'm, this didn't happen at this particular bagel store. This happened to another bagel store, which I won't name. Okay. They literally, it was like disrespectful. Yeah. Like they literally took an unmel no unmelted stick of butter and just put it in there and like. <laughs> Like, are you, like, are you insane? Like, why would you, do you, would you like your bagel like this? I wouldn't like my bagel. Like, literally, it was like, it was an unmelted damn near stick of butter that I took off the thing. And then, like, it was like a mop. Like, I was, like, squeezing out the butter. Like, I was like. You could oh, polish your floors with that. Oh, huh? my God. It was, it was downright disrespectful. I like wow. to slice yeah. the bagel so that the butter seeps in deep. But I don't like it necessarily dripping. Yeah, get it on your Because then it gets on my I don't need, I, and my face, I don't, I, yeah. and then I'm all smelling my butter. That happens, yeah. that's the, that's, that's what's happening to me all the time. I'm having to like wash my face after like the bagel Yeah, experience. that's not okay. Oh, wow. All right, well, I'm going to let the, <laughs> let, let the kid, yeah, let yeah, the yeah, kid and, the you know, I'm never going to do like the, the negative Yelp thing. I'm not, I don't get down like yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hey. I don't get down like that. Because <laughs> we know. Me neither. Yeah, we know. Yeah, 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 I know. We know who does those <laughs> Yeah, things. and then it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's all, you know, it, it, we, we tr strive for a, 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 a positive customer experience. So this isn't, it's not even my business, you know, but I am connected to the business in a way, so. No, but you do, yeah. not, you do yeah. think, you, 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 you can tell you do things generally just with care. It doesn't matter what they are. Yeah. Like what, you know what I mean? Like there's certain people, I'm like this way too. There's certain people that just do things well. It yeah. doesn't, and it's not because they're talented or this, it's because they have a dedication, an inner dedication to doing things well. Mm -hmm. And like, you And know. they're observant, like you were mentioning Yeah, and earlier. then some people are just like, nah, whatever. Their whole life is, and eh, whatever. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's why, you know, a lot of people don't succeed. Those are mm -hmm. the people that don't succeed. And it's yeah. like... A customer asks you for light butter on a bagel. That doesn't mean shine a flashlight on a whole stick of butter. Yeah, L I T E okay. butter and L I G H T butter might be different. Oh yeah, and it's not. I can't believe it's not butter either. So, but we I, only have one type of butter. I don't so think that, anyone that has. Happen. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone has misunderstood that. But I think about that all the time because, mm -hmm. like, sometimes I have to say light amount of butter right. to, yeah. to further clarify. Yeah, they'd be like, run over to Seven Eleven, get that light butter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah waiting. Oh, I think he wants country crock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smart balance. I, I like. I used to like country crock as a kid. Gross now. Yeah. Why? How? How come it turns? Be that was promoted to us as kids as yeah. something special because it was different from the hard stick of butter. How hard was that to put on your toast on it's your very, English it's muffin? It's very comforting to just go just, into a, a thing of country crock. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, and then anyway. it's a big tub. It seems like it's never. Well, why end. does it make yeah. the bay the whatever you put it on just instantly turn to mush? What is it about that it's just mm, so? Because it has water in it. I think it's emulsified with water. It's uh, not actual. F it's it's like fat, like trans oil. fats. It's oh, oils, trans fats, but then they have one. to emulsify it. And I think this is just my theory. <laughs> so butter is, you know, real fat, like actual fat. Yeah. And um, that other stuff, they try to make it seem like real Fatty. fat. So they got to use emulsifiers. And I think Ooh. there's, I think water is one of the main ingredients. That's not, that so weird. that might answer your question. But, but real <laughs> butter is good now. It's new health food. They say. Yeah, butter's good for you now. <laughs> yeah. Miles is like, what? No. I didn't like butter when I was little either. I liked margarine because that's what I was raised on, margarine. Mm. Butter tasted funny, you know? Isn't country crock kind of like margarine? It is. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's exactly what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. some kind of margarine. Or um, oleo, as my grandma used to call it. It's an mm. old school name. But there, I'm getting into the... Elder talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, let's do it. Like, we're talking. We talk, what, what's we've your had generation? Toenail, pedicures, butter. What's your birthday? Meats. June 23rd. Gemini? Uh, cancer. Cancer. You're like, don't ever call me a Gemini <laughs> ever yeah, again. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm on the cusp. Yeah, and I already know you're an 80s kid. Yeah. All right. 84. Yeah. I, I was in, I was in this, I was Impressed. born in the seminal year of the 80s, the 84. You know? Since 84. Yeah, and you know, Orwell, you know, it's, it's yeah. a very significant year. Yeah. Definitely. I was, definitely. I was seven, mm -hmm. eight. I was eight. Turning nine. Mm hmm. Seventies. Good yeah. era. Mm hmm. It's good. Good 75. decade. Seventy-five. 
So did I do my math right? Yes. I'm trying to think of what the what what's what's the what's the significant year in the seventies? Is it seventy two or seventy four? I think it's seventy five as far as I'm concerned. Because no, yeah, I feel like seventy eight. I feel I was like late seventy nine because that's yeah. the year uh, Alien came out. The original. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, we're talking but oh oh we can talk well, butter in the and, 60s, and toenails. Have you to told me to roast you. I've been very kind. In the sixties it would have to be sixty eight, right? Summer of love. Uh, maybe seventy two, seventy three. Seventy two, seventy three. Yeah. Oh, when did Kennedy die? Seventy two. Oh dear. I have to go to the restroom. I can't. Right. Don't ask me history questions. <laughs> Hey, when did I was, say I was an educator? When it was a very significant area. <laughs> I mean, the, I sell carpet. It's a very significant year in the Bay Area hip hop scene. Recently. Every year. Every year, but 06, I was gonna say. Why? No, Hyphy. Oh, you came out. You came out here in 08, right? Yeah, Didn't yeah, you, yeah. Would you say you heard the call of Hyphy? You heard the. Unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This is this sounds juicy. This is Uh-oh. gonna get good, man. Okay, I'll be back. So you're not a hyphy. You're not a hyphy. I I don't like I don't like goofy music. I don't care. I don't care where it's from or like what era or what. But goofy, it's it's just it bangs and it's the the high high rhythm. I like serious. The... I like serious. That's yeah. But it's all like lighthearted and yeah. jovial and fucking like I like serious. I like Nas. I like serious music. Oh okay. Well, yeah. I like it too. Like but... music to me is just very. It's a very it's a very serious thing. Yeah. And, um, and like, I guess, like, not taking that lightly, like, my it reflects in the type of music I make. I see. Respect and, it. uh, yeah, I don't really make, like, jokey music, mm-hmm. really. And, like, even, like, artists like Eminem, who's probably the most skilled rapper of all time, um, I've never really been a fan of his. Really? Yeah, never. I don't like I like I, I don't like about like oh killing your mom and this and that and blah 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 like I don't really relate to that you know yeah what I mean? yeah it was definitely a little creepy with some of the stuff yeah sure, like but... I I and like <laughs> I, I I don't know I I I I gravitate towards more like I don't know reality based stuff and um, you know. Yeah, the the jokey stuff was never really for me, so I kind of associated the hyphy with. But that's see, that's the thing. Stuff. I don't think of the hyphy as jokey. I guess some of Mac Dre, he had some clever and Dude, like kind of funny. Anytime you're doing fizz face and you're dressed up in the crazy outfits, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, all that. Oh, that's, yeah. that's all jokey to me. You know oh, that's I mean? just high energy to me. See, it's but like, it's because they're because they're they're you know doing that and then gotta, they'll come up and stomp the roof out of your yeah, car. I, and no, smack I know. The hell out no, of you. I know. But like in New York, it's like the ref, the the like the it's, the music reflected the street. It's like. A deadly, al- a deadly dark alley. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's more like, like it a, has like the pit, more like, hey, like the mafia, filled, like, you know, yeah, we're gonna like, like, instead of like, whereas the Bay, it's kind of like, hey, yeah, boom, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. as New York, it's more like, you know, and then they take it down. I, I, I see <laughs> yeah, it, I get yeah. it, it's like, it, it's, it's a vibe. We're very, we're vibe, very yeah. serious, like, even yeah, like, yeah. people like, in the streets are very serious, like, we don't like, really stop and like, talk to people and like. Oh, I get, we had a question from the peanut gallery. Is Messy Marv a joke or nah? Whoa, nah, Messy mess made out. serious music. Yeah, but I think, see, that's the thing. He's probably considering because he's part of a, the hyphy umbrella. Martin Messy was part of that movie. But he's yeah, more Bay Area I, mob music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say, like, yeah, he was part of that era. But I wouldn't say, like, musically he was on some, like, hyphy shit. Like you said, that's a Bay Area mob shit. Yeah. You know? But Get On My Hype, that was definitely a hyphy song. You know that one? I don't know. Yeah, that. it was like one of his books. Get on oh. my hype. Yeah, it's it's just it was like Messy Marv hyphy, but I don't know. I you know because it's all Bay. I think everyone that was in the Bay, whether it, whatever you were doing, they kind of get. It was like they got into that hyphy and, sound. For and also, bit. I didn't say that the hyphy was a joke. I said it was jokey. Okay, Clarif- <laughs> clarification for Mister Silverstein. So, they, oh, playing with my nose is serious. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I, I just like I, I guess I just uh, gravitate towards like. Uh, serious tone music you know yeah for sure thank you hey thanks for weighing in yeah uh, serious we, we, tone music so got, who are some room. of your favorite artists i'm so good i would have been like, i would have woken up tomorrow morning at two o'clock being like must 
as said questions. Nas was one way like, no way, personally to listen to, to like, or like growing I mean, up rap? you're like wait to I guess yeah. I gotta I gotta break it down genre because okay like, rap because like rap yes I like I yes. can't I can't like put a Jay Z no, record I'm, I'm with like, you I'm with you and on like that. A, a a Bill Withers you're sophisticated record. continental yeah, like, I get you yeah. so how about um let me let me be more specific new hip hop in terms of like the past five years past five um, years what's, uh, what's Kendrick Kendrick Lamar nice. um. Beautiful. I always like Rick Ross, like, uh, like what he did. Like he, you know, he had has just like a certain t- same thing. So a certain serious edge. Like he, he, you know, he has like jokey elements too. But like a lot of his stuff is like samples, serious music. It's not really like synth. It's so overly synthetic. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's still like that real music vibe to it. Um, maturity. Is Nipsey a word Hustle. That comes yeah, to yeah. Mind maturity. Too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because. I feel like when you're like when you're a novice in this, you're trying all this stuff, and then you kind of zero in on what works, not only for you but just in general. Mm-hmm. And um, what's timeless as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing. Is, is like timeless. I don't really like making music. I don't really get caught up in like fads and like doing things that every oh, oh like oh we, everyone's doing this, so you got to do it now. Like I'm not with that. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I never, I was never like that. I'm never gonna be like that. I do things on my own accord, and. And I do things because I see the intrinsic value in it, not because of what anyone else thinks. You know what I mean? For sure. And my radar has always been good, whether uh, it's good or I've just through practice. I don't know what it is, but I, I've, I've always had a good year. Intuition. Yeah, intuition. Yeah, yeah. That's real. And um, who else? Rick Ross, um, Nipsey. Nipsey, I love Nipsey. Um, really unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah really, really unfortunate loss. Um, the homie Simba, who's who's also from out here. Simba is really dope, incredible, incredible like rapper, uh, an artist. Um, just trying to think who else I'm really into. Um, D Smoke is really dope. Um, hmm. Try to think, try to think. <laughs> I feel like taking notes. Hey, we got and a I, video record of it. Yeah, yeah. Video, oh, yes. Like, yeah, I'll just rewatch yeah. this several times yes. with a notepad at and my. Who else? Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, that's my, your job. Yeah. My, my homie flipped and arrows is super dope. Um, trying to think of artists that are in the last, rappers in the last five years. It's kind of hard, to be honest, you know? You mentioned her. Hers really dope, yeah. yeah. Hers super dope. Um, but like I said, like kind of like it's it's almost like apples and oranges because she's mm-hmm. like an R and B artist versus like just a straight like. It's hard to put like a Rick Ross and a her in like a same category. competitive category. You know what I mean? Um, and then like, you know, I like I like a lot of old stuff too. I've been like listening to like a bunch of old random stuff. Uh, Benny King and uh, Fleetwood Mac and um, you can go yeah yeah you haven't hit it yet Supremes but this is when nostalgia like, starts to hit and yeah. you start to go back to that music yeah, I've definitely yeah. been doing that for the past I like, like six li- months. listen yeah me too like listening to a lot of stuff that like I would roll around with my mom listening to like traveling Wilburys and stuff like that and uh, Tom Earth, Petty Earth Wind and Fire I love Earth Wind and Fire yeah Earth Wind and Fire is dope and um. Bobby Caldwell, Bobby Caldwell, super dope. I don't know if you guys are familiar with, yeah, super dope. He was in a group, right? I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 if, if he was, <laughs> I mean, Rewind. yeah, if he was, I need, I need to go back and and figure it like out. Bobby Caldwell was one of a crew. It could be, yeah. And um, who else? Uh, well, let me go through. Let me go through the, go. the old Use iTunes. Technology. Yeah, the old iTunes library. Um, got some George Harrison. How you doing, Miles? You doing good? Yeah. <laughs> We're almost done. We're right at the end here. We got some Bootsy, yeah. some Michael McDonald. Oh, Bootsy. Some Biggie, some Mark Morrison, uh, some old school reggae, Dawn Penn. Oh, um, yes. No, no, no. Sister no, Nancy. No. Yeah. Don't make um, me start singing. This, uh, this rock yeah. artist that I, I feel like not... Change the podcast to a singing, <laughs> singing cast. Cut. <laughs> and now, for our musical number... Have you guys heard of this, this rock artist, Lizzie? Lizzie. Lizzie. L-I-S-S-I-E. Mm-mm. She's so dope. She's almost like 
a new Stevie Nicks or something like oh, that. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. she's Where's she from? Missy. I States? don't know. I don't, yeah. Uh, if it would, if there was anywhere else she would be from, not here, it'd probably be Canada. All right. But I'm, uh, I'm not 100% sure. She, she might, she more than likely is from here, but super dope. Her, 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 uh, I've sampled her a bunch of times. Don't tell anybody. Um, Uh-oh. And uh, <laughs> I got my what else we got? Her. Aerosmith. Aerosmith is like one of my favorite mm-hmm. rock bands ever. Bill Withers, obviously Bob Marley. I think Bob Marley is probably the single greatest uh, musical artist in history. Yes. Um, Bryson Tiller, D. Smoke, uh, Dire Straits, mm-hmm. Dr. Dre, uh, Dusty Springfield, Fleetwood Mac, The Foundations, Foxy yep, so. Brown, Grover Washington, Isaac Hayes. Uh, Juice World, Kodak Black. You know about Credence? Yep, and they're they went to El Cerrito High, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's why we're that's, that's super dope. Yeah, I didn't know. A little Bay trivia. No, I, I honestly, I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> I know that. you know. I I found that out semi recently. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Well, N- oh, Nina Simone. I love Nina Simone. Mm. I love. I think uh, Strange Fruit is like. The pff, one of the most compelling songs ever. Yeah, it should be it should be ne- necessary learning. Yeah. In uh, middle school. The Roots. I love the Roots. The Me Roots too. are probably like one of my favorite uh, artists to see live. Um, Sam Cooke, the Shirelles. You know what's the trip about the Roots is somehow they didn't get ruined by being on. What, what 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 Jimmy Fallon? Jimmy, yeah, I was about to say SNL. I'm like, don't say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would think I was, that kind I, of I, yeah, yeah, I thought that would. I, ah, I how? Mean, you know what's? Ooh, you, you know what's really all? Want to get into that? I mean, Why Mike, that would ruin them? I mean, well, Max Weinberg was still you, on. Uh, still on. He well, was on Conan O'Brien. You know what's really good, good for a band? band? Max Weinberg, the drummer, he was on uh, Conan O'Brien, and then he was in uh, Bruce Springsteen's yeah, Street Band yeah, for years and years. Yeah. But I'm talking about the why... whole band. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, it just well, kind of. You know, you know what is good for band, uh, band morale, steady TV checks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So absolutely. They always, always looked happy, and I'm like, <laughs> you guys, you, you know, I, I hope Jimmy's really nice to them. That's all I have to say. You know what's I funny? Hope he's not is being I fake. did not like Jim Fallon at first. Mm-hmm. He seems like, he's got like a really great seemingly great personality so yeah. he's like he's got that likability factor but yeah he just I didn't like him at first his he interviews were like he, yeah like yeah it was, was something just, it was something a, it was a little, little it was, it was like a little anxious. cheesy he was a mm. little anxious and a little cheesy and I feel like I feel like he 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 settled in his comfortability more as an entertainer and stuff like that and I feel like it's, it's you know sometimes it's like less is more where you don't have to try and you kind of just do something and it's funny yeah yeah, yeah. um Oh, hey, we got another one from the peanut gallery here. Make more music with Filthy Rich, please. Hella Dope was a straight banger. Oh, man, appreciate that, Rob. Nice. That, that means a lot, man. That that That's big. Um, yeah, Phil, Filthy's, uh, Filthy's a dope artist, you know? Filthy, he was in this one song that I actually liked. But, now, do you know this group called Hustlanity Mobism? They yeah. were in, it was in, like, 2011. Uh, but there's a song with it Filthy Rich, Shady Nate, and then this guy, J-Dub, from Hustlanity Mobism. And it was called Definition of Mobbing. So uh, the beat production was really cool. Do you know who uh, did it? I don't know who did it. It was, uh, but you can look him up on YouTube. Uh, Definition of mobbing. Yeah. Hmm. Shady Nate, Filthy Rich. Shady Nate's my homie. Shady Nate's yeah. like, super dope. Yeah, I really like uh, any song that he's in that I mm-hmm. hear. That whenever his verse comes on, it's like he it k- kills it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like Shady. He's definitely one of the one of the better rappers in in the Bay Area. <laughs> he's saying time to go. Well, it has yeah. been an hour. So sweet. So we are approaching the end of our show time here. Uh, Mr. Perry, thank you so much for being here. Is there oh, anything you man. want to plug? Any uh, any last last uh, things you want to get out to the people the, who watch my obscure uh, information YouTube for the people? That's I my mean, information for definitely the people definitely podcast. got some uh, some some more music dropping. I'm on like the the fifth single from my EP. I'm kind of dropping things in a different way. Uh, albums are kind of dead in a sense. Not as far as like dropping bodies of work, but as far as like releasing bodies of work without having that that. Mm-hmm. Beyonce ish fan base to just receive it. So uh I'm dropping a couple more singles and then releasing the EP. Uh and then uh probably gonna start on my next production EP. And then I got another project slated that I'm kind of trying to figure out the theme or what I'm gonna do it or who I'm gonna do it with. 
And then, uh, you know, IP collections, if anyone, you know, anyone out there needs help collecting royalties. And mind you, if you don't have activity on those records, there's nothing I can collect. If your song has 1.35 plays, there's nothing I can collect on it. You know what I mean? But uh, collectmypub.com. <laughs> Ter- the, the, the website's terrible. I honestly, I built it myself because uh, just to not Who's waste the domain guy? name. Oh, and we can find it. You want me to put your in- IG up for the people? Oh, yeah, like, IG. Yeah, you follow know, I, on Instagram, Ma- Max Perry Music. Max Perry Music on, on IG or Twitter or uh, <laughs> Facebook or SoundCloud. Everything's Max Perry Music. Um, look out for the new albums. Like I said, any artists that need help collecting, you know, please feel free to reach out. And, uh, yeah, just uh, some other, like, kind of top secret stuff in the works. But like, So you know, you'll whoa. have to come back then with yeah, that so secret. I, I, I'll come back when, when I could actually let yes. the cat out of the bag because you know, you know how it is. Yeah, know, yeah. Too, Stay so. tuned. We might have a couple more viewers even. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Thanks. Uh, once again, thanks so much for your time. Of course. Being out here. Me. Well, uh, all y'all were, who were commenting, Rob, uh, Dead Man Walking Ratchet, thank you guys for, for coming through. And, uh, yeah, have an excellent evening. Go check out Max Perry on Spotify and Instagram and all that. Listen to some of those slappers. He makes bangers, I'm telling you. Yeah. Faded, be, uh, Burner, Be Real, and Snoop Dogg, one of my favorites. I was listening to some of his other Burner ones, Messy Marv, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. So go, go check him out. Um, and, yeah, adios. Eargasms. Eargasms. Mm-hmm. Straight your guess. Pure. <laughs>